Alright, there's a new weak package in Golang 1.24 which just introduces weak pointers, which are pretty closely tied to the Golang runtime. And this is what we are going to discuss and look at in this video. We are going to just simply apply weak pointers by implementing a really simplified cache. Okay, so let's first clarify the question, what is even a weak pointer? So I'm going to really briefly discuss what weak pointers actually are. Probably they just need their own video because they deserve their own explanation. Okay, so on a high level overview, a weak pointer is basically just really simplified a way to reference a chunk of memory without locking it down. So that in the end the garbage collector can just really clean up this memory whenever nothing really holds this reference anymore. And what is really important to know here, whenever the memory that the weak pointer is pointing to basically is cleaned up, the weak pointer itself becomes nil. So there's no real risk of actually pointing to freed up memory. But this behavior only occurs when there are no strong references anymore to the object itself. So there is the differentiation between a weak pointer and a strong pointer or a weak reference and a strong reference. Now why would you actually use weak pointers? So first there are use cases where you can actually leverage weak pointers to enhance the functionality of something. But one really noticeable use case would be to make better caches and that's what we are going to demonstrate in this video. Because in the end you can just clean up the memory in the cache itself whenever the for instance key value pair is not really used in the program anymore. And one obvious use case would be to save memory. So for example when you keep track of a lot of things these weak pointers help you to avoid wasting memory. Okay so two best practices just before we implement the cache solution here. The first best practice is always check for nil because in the end you're trying to get something from a weak pointer However, this reference can be already gone, right? So the weak pointer can be already nil. And the second best practice is don't overuse them. Weak pointers should be used rarely for specific use cases where it definitely makes sense. But really, you don't need them everywhere. All right, so let's just get into the code here and into the cache implementation. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to demonstrate actually the memory leak due to not leveraging weak pointers for our cache. So this is, like I said before, a really simplified cache. So we are not going to handle concurrency or anything like that. We're going to keep it really simple to just demonstrate weak pointers here. And we have a simple struct, right, which is a resource cache. And this struct just holds a items map, right? And here we are going to define as the key a struct and as the value we have a pointer of a string. Now you might wonder yourself why we are even using this pointer string and not even a raw string, right? And there are like mainly two reasons why we are using that here. So the first reason is that we want to kind of nullify or kind of invalidate the key value pair, right? So for this example we can just say nil as the value instead of a string for that pointer string. But if we just use a raw string, we cannot use the nil value here. That's just one minor reason. The other reason is actually that we want to save some memory. Because whenever we have a pointer to a string, we are pointing directly to this memory instead of copying it into the cache. Now in the end, we are really optimizing for memory flexibility, but also potential concurrency patterns. All right, so let's create some helper functions. Let's just create a new resource cache kind of constructor here. Right, in the end, it just returns a pointer to our resource cache. And here we're going to create the resource cache. And in here, we are going to initialize the items map. All right, I think that's pretty simple so far. Next step would be to add the add functionality and also the get functionality, right? So we want the key as the string here. And then we also want the value, which is a pointer to a string. And then we just say items at key is equal to value. Now this is really simplified as well, right? Feel free to add really a lot of nil checks here or some other validation functionalities, but I'm going to really keep it simple. Also, we're going to add the get functionality. So we are just saying rc.items at key, and then we are going to return the value and exist. So we are going to, in the end, return the resource itself in the Boolean really indicating whether the resource was found or not. And in the end, we don't need the pointer here to our resource cache as well. So let's get straight to the main function. All right, so for the main function, we are just going to initialize the resource cache here. So we say new resource cache. And then we're going to create one more utility function, which is called print memory usage. And this utility function just prints the current memory usage. I've also made a video just specifically about this functionality. So feel free to check out this video as well. Okay, so in here we are leveraging the runtime package. And here we say memstats. And then we say runtime 
dot read mem stats. And here we are going to just pass in the reference to m. And then we are going to print something to the console. So here we're going to transform the alloc, which is m dot alloc, which is a un64 to a float64. And to get really the correct metric here, we're going to divide by 1024 and again by 1024. Now, why is that actually the case? I was explaining this in the video, so feel free to check it out. All right, now back to our main function. We're going to create a big string function. Now to really demonstrate here heavy memory usage, we are going to create a utility anonymous function. So let's call this anonymous function create big string. And in the end, it returns a pointer string. And in the end here, we are going to create a slice of bytes. And this basically is just allocating 10 megabytes of memory. And in the end, we are just going to kind of convert this byte slice to a string itself, and then we are going to return it directly. Obviously, this has to be the reference, okay? And this now allocates a string of the size 10 megabytes. So pretty useless, but this should really demonstrate weak pointers. All right, so let's create this big data by just calling this anonymous function. And then we are going to say cache.add. Obviously, we want to cache the big data because it is a lot of memory. And here we're going to say big, right and then big data and then we are going to call the cache.get functionality so we say cache.get big and if it is okay we are just going to print line something to the console found value pretty simple so far now let's get to the interesting stuff so let's just say that we kind of assign the big data to nil and now what we want is that the cache kind of invalidates this pointer as well. But because we are not using weak pointers, it does not automatically get cleaned up. So I'm going to demonstrate this by just leveraging the print memory function here. So let's just have a fmt.print and we say before GC, right, before garbage collection. And then we say print memory usage. And after that, we are just going to manually trigger the garbage collection here. Now, clearly, you are not going to call this runtime.gc function, which will manually trigger the garbage collection in your production code, right? This is just for demonstration purposes here. Obviously, this will run in the background whenever things get garbage collected, right? All right, then let's add a print as well. So after GC, after garbage collection, and then we are going to print the memory usage here as well. And then just for demonstration purposes, we are just going to get the big string as well, right? If it was found, if the value exists or the key value pair exists in our cache, we're just going to print it as well. So we are going to print the use memory here for this key value pair as well. So in the end, if we now run this code, we will actually see that before and after GC, the memory is 10.14. Let's add one space here, right? So it is 10.14. And in the end, it's still holding 10 megabytes in the cache, which is kind of wrong because the big data is now nil and we do not want to keep this 10 megabytes of memory inside of our cache. And this is really where the memory leak kind of exists because the pointer in our cache is still pointing to the memory because it doesn't really know that it needs to be cleaned up in the end. And the reason for that is that the cache retains the strong references to the data, really preventing it from being garbage collected. Okay, so let's fix this cache here by leveraging weak pointers. Okay, so what we're going to do, instead of using the raw pointer to a string, we are just going to make use of weak.pointer and then string. I'm going to import that package here. Now this is available in Golang 1.24. The language server I'm using is not pointing to Golang 1.24 and that's why I'm seeing this error here but it should exist in Golang 1.24. Okay, and now by using this weak pointer, obviously we have to adapt the other functionalities, but by now by using these weak pointers, the garbage collector allows us to kind of reclaim the resources when they are no longer in use, right? Even if they are still present in the cache. And a really important thing to notice is, is that when all the strong references are removed to this weak pointer, then the garbage collector can reclaim the memory. Okay, so let's adapt the other functionalities here. So we're going to say weak dot pointer and then string. And then for the add functionality, we are just going to say weak pointer, basically weak dot make and then value. And this just creates a weak pointer to the value. And then we are going to assign this here. 
Now in here, the cache entry automatically expires when the resource is collected by the garbage collector. So for the get functionality, things will get a bit more complicated. So let's just rename this to weak pointer because now it is a weak pointer, not the value itself. And then we're going to check if it does not exist, we just return nil and false, right? Because obviously now the weak pointer does not exist in our cache. Now what we're going to say now, remember the first best practice is the nil checks. So whenever the value has been garbage collected, right, the value method in our weak pointer, so which is dot value, will return nil instead of the value itself. So what we can say here, basically if the value, right, the value of our pointer basically is not nil, we can return the pointer and true because now it exists. However, if the pointer is nil itself, so if it has been garbage collected, we can just remove the key out of our resource cache. We have to make this a pointer by now. And then we return nil and false as well. So again, if the value is nil, it really means that the resource has been garbage collected. Right? And in the end, we can just remove the weak pointer from the cache to prevent the cache really from holding a reference to a kind of dead object. Right, so coming back to our main function, we don't need to change anything here, but let's just check out the functionality now. And what we will actually see is that it first found the value, obviously, and then we see before the garbage collection, we have the standard megabytes, right, which is correct because we are allocating 10 megabytes of a string into our cache. And after the garbage collection, we now have the freed up memory here. And the most important thing is that now this big data, so through this step here, through assigning big data to nil, this is the critical step, right? This really removes the strong reference to the big data. And this really leaves only the weak reference in the cache. So in the end, because we set it to nil, it kind of signals the weak pointer that this can be garbage collected and can be freed up. All right, so hopefully this was all clear. And by the way, did you know that Golang supported generics since Golang 1.18, but just now recently added support for generics for type aliases? So if you're curious, feel free to check out this video here as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye-bye.